AviationPros.com is the portal website for AMT, airport business, and ground support worldwide magazines. Visit daily for breaking news, industry blogs, and insightful articles from our magazine's editorial team. And don't forget to sign up for our publication's daily e-newsletters. It's all at AviationPros.com. Hello and welcome to the Aviation Pros Podcast. I'm Walker Yarrow, Editor of Aircraft Maintenance Technology, and today I'm bringing you the first in a multi-part series on the competition put on by the Aerospace Maintenance Council and presented by Snap-on. Formerly, the competition went by the Aerospace Maintenance Competition, but this year it has rebranded. And it's a year first for the competition, as this will be the first time the event is taking place in Chicago in conjunction with MRO Americas. With a new name and in a new city, this limited series we're calling Gearing Up for the Competition will explore the ins and outs of this year's event as we hear from the competition's organizers, presenters, competitors, and more each episode as we head towards the competition start date on April 9th, 2024. And there's no better way to kick off this limited podcast series than by speaking with Ken McTiernan. For those who have been to the competition in the past, Ken's voice will be familiar as he's the chairman of the competition, and he also serves as the vice president of the Aerospace Maintenance Council. Ken fills us in on the history of the competition, how it benefits competitors, and the aviation industry at large. He touches on what's in store for this year's event. He also tells us how the competition is helping to patch the skills gap and technician shortage being felt around the industry. So without further delay, here's my conversation with Ken McTiernan. Ken, thank you for taking the time to uh, chat with us this morning. The first question I got for you, for those unfamiliar, can you just give us the the history of the competition and how it's evolved over time? The competition was created to give a platform for aircraft maintenance technicians, engineers, and students to stand tall for their profession and show what they do firsthand to attendees of the competition. We have many different responsibilities from airframe to electrical to power plant, and we put all these skill sets on display at the competition. But even though it's a competition, in essence, it really is a network opportunity for our craft as a whole to come together and just raise the awareness worldwide for what we do. And are there any notable uh, milestones or notable um, events from the history of the competition that, that come to mind? Yeah, so um, it's been a, a long road, but each step has been just a wonderful journey in promoting the profession. Prior to the competition, uh, it was called the AMT Society's Maintenance Skills Competition. And the first year, we had nine teams total. We didn't have any categories. We had a couple of commercial teams and we had a couple of college teams and there were four people per team. And then the following year, we went up to 15 teams. And the year after that, we cracked the 20 number. We were around uh, 26, I believe. And then each year it just grew. And now that it's the uh, Aerospace Maintenance Council's competition, it has grown exponentially. We have uh, 27 separate events, and we're up to 84 teams with five people per team. So we have 420 students and professionals competing against each other, all to promote our profession. Uh, they're all there individually to fly the colors for their respective company and organization, but they're also there as a whole to show the public the knowledge, skill, and integrity that is the foundation for all aircraft maintenance technicians. That's excellent. And you just touched on a little bit of my next question for you, but how does the competition and participating in it help propel the professional development of the competitors? And how does it benefit the the larger aviation industry? Teams and people that are part of the, of the competition help raise awareness 
not only to the public, but also within the industry, kind of out of sight, out of mind. When people fly, they see the pilot, they see a gate agent, and they'll see a flight attendant. They very rarely see the technician or engineer that's maintaining the airplane. And when they do, it's normally uh, just a universal throw their head back, shrug their shoulders and think, oh, great, now I'm going to be delayed. This competition helps to show that the reason we're there is, you know, possibly you might take a delay. You may not, but these skilled men and women have dedicated their careers to ensure their safety. And it's not just commercial aviation. There's also the men and women that maintain military helicopters and aircraft, cargo and attack, uh, experimental, space, SpaceX. There are airframe and power plant technicians working on uh, SpaceX starships. If it flies, there are many reasons why that craft is flying. And one of the reasons are the men and women that are behind the veil of safety. And that's today's aircraft technicians and engineers. And when they come to the competition, they're helping to pull back that veil of secrecy of what we do. And by letting people know what we do, hopefully we can turn the corner of recognition and respect for an unrecognized uh, profession. So walk me through then what a typical day looks like for a competitor. What are some of the, the unexpected challenges they might face while competing? Well, the challenges for the competitors as they compete on a daily basis, the actual physical competition covers two days, and then the third day is when we hand out the awards. But even prior to the competition physically starting, all the competitors assemble at what we call an orientation meeting. And that's where the judges for each of the individual events get up and introduce themselves and explain what their event is and then answer any questions and all the criteria for the events are posted on our website, but it's, it's one thing to read about what the event is like reading a maintenance manual. And then you can practice to a certain extent. You can actually create some of the events to practice, to get your time better, but then to physically meet the judges. And then out of 420 competitors, one person can ask, a question that nobody really thought of and 419 other competitors get the benefit of that answer. Uh, it also helps to alleviate any kind of uh, butterflies that they may have because now, you know, things are starting to heat up. Uh, things are real because the following morning, the competitors are going to go to their assigned events. And at nine o'clock, when I say engineers, technicians, students, ready, set, start, Human nature takes over and people can get nervous and they just battle through it and they focus and they all do great. Um, we use time for the competitors to determine who gets first, second and third place prizes and trophies. But that's the only reason we time the events, because if a specific team has a higher score than another team, it doesn't mean they're any less capable of maintaining an aircraft or a spacecraft. It just means they, they use more time. It's a competition. Um, they may have gotten sidetracked. There was something unexpected popped up that caused them to incur, you know, like a 10 second uh, delay on their overall score. After 15 minutes, I say stop. And the competitors, you can audibly hear a relief of, oh, okay. Because they've been practicing almost a whole year for that specific event and it's over in 15 minutes and there's no going back and redoing it. And then they'll have probably, probably like an hour rest and then they'll do another three events and they'll do that till all 27 events are accomplished. And in the process of the two days of the competition, when they're not physically competing, the professionals are sitting in the stands with the college students and they're mentoring because these students are not yet certificated and they're looking at the professionals. They're looking at the people that they want to be and they have an opportunity 
to talk and gig and ask questions. And it really is, um, it's a win-win situation for everybody involved. So uh, the daily process for each team may be a little bit different from what they take away from it, but as a whole, it's a positive. And yeah, we'll definitely get into the mentorship side of it a little later on here. But I first want to ask about, this is the first time the competition is being held in Chicago. So what excites you about the new location, the new venue, and what should our audience be looking forward to about the competition in Chicago? The fact that it's in Chicago just is more for uh, two things. One, logistically, um, if a team is from Chicago, like as an example, American Airlines is sponsoring a team from Chicago. They don't have to worry about the logistics, but there's West L.A. College is flying all the way from L.A. They got to go across the country. So that adds a little nuance for accommodations and transportation for teams. But once they get there, the level of competition and professionalism and the camaraderie is all the same. It doesn't change from city to city other than just maybe different teams that can actually attend because of the new location but i'm excited to be in chicago it's a new city and uh, they've got a rich history in aviation yeah and speaking of uh west la college the competition usually attracts more than uh 20 school teams why is it you would say a good thing for schools to attend the event, and what long-term benefits do these um, school teams gain from participating? Having uh, college teams compete in the competition uh, helps the profession in a couple of ways. One, it helps to show young men and women that may not be aware of maintaining aircraft and spacecraft as a career, but they'll see West LA in the news or on social media competing in this annual worldwide competition and go, wow, you know, I think working on airplanes would be pretty cool. And they would start the process of looking into becoming an aircraft technician. Uh, It also gives the school the ability to promote their programs, such as West LA, to show that, hey, this is what we do. And we produce a very good product for our students and that's shown by their competing in this annual competition where they place almost every year. So it's, it's a good way to promote the craft to those who aren't aware of it. And it's a good way for schools to promote their programs and get their name out. And then turning back to the the mentorship side, you mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of these professional teams, like you said, they take the the younger competitors, the schools kind of under their wing. Is there a success story or an impactful moment that's emerged from that over the years that that kind of springs to mind? The mentorship for the competition and the and the students is it's one of the ways I get paid. I, I volunteer to do this. Uh, the AMC team. Uh, we're volunteers, and when we hear success stories about students, um, I'll use, a, again, as an example, there was a student from West L.A. that was competing, and the attendees just for the MRO trade show is about 13,000 people, and then you have all the companies that are sponsoring teams for the competition. Well, several years ago, um, the student for West LA was doing an event and it allows management from airlines and different companies within the industry to observe firsthand because these students are hand-picked. So the schools aren't going to send students that are late to class, missing assignments. They're sending students that are at the top of their game, always doing the best that they can in their assignments, are always on time. Basically, they're employees that you would want to hire, and these companies can watch them firsthand, physically five feet away from where they're standing. Well, at this time, United Airlines management was watching one of the West L.A. students, and they turned around, and the management said, go hire her. And this student is now working at 
United Airlines because they could observe her uh, passion and dedication to the competition and said, you know what, she'd be a great addition to the United team. And she was offered a job there on the spot before she even got out of school, which is great because there really isn't a huge pipeline for student engineers and technicians coming down the road to fill those that are retiring. There's a big gap that needs to be filled. So the competition is enabling these students uh, kind of leapfrogging. They're offered interviews right there for the different airlines. So uh, that's a, just a huge plus. Uh, I know the students take away this from it because they're getting a job, but I take away from it that we at the Aerospace Maintenance Council, we're meeting our mission statement and our goals by promoting the craft, and that's a perfect example. And then the mentorship, uh, you can see colleges sitting in the bleachers that are sponsored by industry. You can see uh, a team from Alaska being mentored by Alaska airline technicians. It, it's passing along of information um, there's no secrets that anybody keeps from other people because we're all responsible for maintaining aircraft and spacecraft to the highest safety levels as possible. So by passing this information along to those coming behind us, uh, it's just a great opportunity for everybody involved. Yeah, that's excellent. And, and awesome to hear those success stories. And it's it's a good segue into my next question, and you touched on a little bit about the skills gap and the the technician shortage. You know, we all hear about the industry facing, and with that in mind, and, and just kind of given everything we've we've talked about so far, what role do you see the competition playing? You know, as we try and tackle these challenges the industry is facing, the competition is helping to raise the awareness of the passion that the men and women that are currently maintaining aircraft to others that have that same passion and abilities to utilize their brain and their hands to uh, maintain complicated machinery. This um, loss of influx of more and more students, they're simply not aware of it. Uh, you know, fixing airplanes, what do I need to do? I have to become certificated. Okay, where do I go to become certificated? Who can fix airplanes? Years ago, if before I started my uh, career, 41 years ago, it was a predominantly male environment uh, because the majority of the technicians came from the military. And as time went by, uh, less and less people were coming from the military. And now we're finding that uh, there are more and more women entering this profession. And that is great. And the competition is helping to show that aircraft do not care about the gender, language, nationality, political uh, beliefs of the technician making the repair on the airplane. That airplane is solely concerned with the knowledge, skill, and integrity to do the job right the first time. And there's no reason why women or minorities cannot do that job. And the competition is helping to showcase that fact that you want to work on airplanes. If you've got what it takes, come on board. And a perfect example of that is when the competition started, um, I'm going to say probably back around 2014, we might have had one or two fem female competitors. <laughs> now, We've got multiple all-female teams, and it's great because when media picks up on that, it just shows young women out there that, hey, if they can do that, I can do it. And we're breaking down barriers. And again, that's uh, part of our mission statement for the Aerospace Maintenance Council. Ken, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat this morning. Uh, I just have one last question for you. Um, the Aerospace Maintenance Council, you know, you're a nonprofit organization. As you mentioned earlier, you're a volunteer yourself. So what can our audience do to help support you all um, with this event or future events? People can get involved with the Aerospace Maintenance Council, and they can also get involved with our competition. But we also have scholarships. 
And we also help provide grants for students that are entering the profession because um, an education to become a licensed aircraft maintenance technician or engineer uh, does cost time, energy, and money. And if people would like to be a sponsor, it's very easy. No sponsorship is too small or too big. And for companies and individuals that want to be a sponsor for the competition or the council, simply go to our website and click on sponsorship and choose what you would like to do. If you'd like to help with the scholarship for the students, that's great. If you'd like to help with uh, prizes for the competition, that's great. If you would like to be an event sponsor, we're always looking for new events to keep the competition fresh and exciting. Contact us and let us know what, what ideas you have. This is really an opportunity for industry to come together, but it's also an opportunity for individuals. And you don't even have to be in the industry to help support it. If you just like aviation and you want to help, you can make a donation for a grant or a scholarship. Our Phoebe Omley scholarship uh, goes towards the students that are competing in the competition. So there's multiple ways that people could help the success of this nonprofit organization uh, be even bigger and more successful. Great. And and I hope everybody listening right now um, considers helping out how they can. Ken will be sure to include you know links to your contact info, the AMC's website in the show notes. But again, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. And I guess just any final thoughts before we wrap up? Well, I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about the Aerospace Maintenance Council and the competition and our scholarships conversation gets the ball rolling and uh, people don't know about you unless they're talking about you. So uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me uh, to talk about something that's near and dear to our hearts at the council. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Aviation Pros podcast and the first part of our series gearing up for the competition. As I mentioned at the end there, you'll find a link to the Aerospace Maintenance Council's website in the show notes. And Ken has been gracious enough to provide his email so you can field any questions you might have about the competition or how to get involved with the competition to him. Again, that's all in the show notes of this episode. So once again, thank you to Ken and thank you all for listening. Our next part of this series will be out in January, but until then, happy holidays from all of us here at AMT.